In this video, we'll go through a second example, uh, solving essentially the same problem as in the previous video, but uh, this time considering Neumann boundary conditions, namely that the partial derivative of u with respect to x at this end of the pipe is equal to zero, and the partial derivative of u with respect to x on the other side of the pipe is also equal to zero. And this essentially represents the heat flux. So this is saying that there is no heat flux coming out of the ends of the pipe. And we'll keep the same initial condition as in the previous problem. So at the beginning of our measurement, the heat distribution was given by some function f of x. So we'll again tackle this problem with separation of variables, but we'll skip right ahead to uh, what we have found already, namely that the x dependence in general was described by this. And the time dependence was given by a separable differential equation, which had a general solution that looked like that. And uh, now we'll apply these new boundary conditions and see what we're left with and look at the differences that that causes. So applying the first boundary condition, we have that uh, really the normal derivative of the x dependence with respect to x evaluated at one end of the pipe, so at x is equal to zero. Taking the derivative of this with respect to x gives us the following expression. This is cosine. And then our boundary condition said that this has to equal to zero. Uh, when this is evaluated at zero and this is evaluated at zero. When x is equal to zero, the cosine is one and the sine is zero. So this term goes away and we're only left with a2 is equal to zero as a result of this boundary condition. This is our first one. Our second boundary condition says that the derivative of x dependence with respect to x evaluated at the other side of the pipe, because we already found a2 is equal to zero, we're only left with this term. And once again, you have two choices, you can either have a1 equal to zero, which means nothing happens, or you have the sine of the square root of lambda times L is equal to zero. And we're going to take the more interesting case where this boundary condition tells us that the sine of the square root of lambda times L has to be equal to zero, which is equivalent to saying that lambda has to equal to n pi over L. So our constant is the same, but you notice that we're already getting a different dependence because in the previous example with the Dirichlet problem, we had a1 was equal to zero. And in this one, the Neumann problem, we now have a2 is equal to zero. So the you can already see that the heat distribution is going to be different, even though the constant uh, remains the same. So we have infinitely many solutions for x. So this is our x dependence with some coefficient a n that we still have to determine. 
and we still haven't uh, looked at our initial condition, but we'll, we'll again build our trial solution by multiplying both the time dependence and the spatial dependence. And as before, this is not enough to satisfy our initial condition. So we're going to need to superimpose all of these solutions to build one uh, that's useful. Okay, this time, our sum is going to start at one. Uh, we're going to treat the case of n equals zero separately. And one of the reasons we have to trade it separately is because if you plug in n is equal to zero, you get this is one, and this is one, and uh, you just get c of zero uh, without any more information at the moment. But we'll deal with that after. For now, we have to play uh, essentially the same game. So we apply our initial condition. which says that time is equal to zero, the heat distribution was some function of X. This term is equal to one when T is equal to zero. And we're left with this. Once again, you have to use the orthogonality property of trigonometric functions this time for cosines, but it's completely analogous. Okay, so this tells you that this integral, whenever n and m are not equal, is equal to zero. And when they are equal, it's just equal to L over two. So applying this to the, our initial condition over here. We integrate over a period. Uh, this side now becomes this. And then uh, this side over here, we multiply it by cosine m pi x over L and integrate it over a period with respect to x. Again, using the orth orthogonality condition, this integral collapses the sum. So that you're only left with C m L over two. by the orthogonality condition over here. So this says that our coefficients are going to be equal to this integral. And
this is our, our general solution. Okay, so this is our solution to our differential equation where these coefficients are given by this expression. As I mentioned earlier, you have to treat the case uh, where n is equal to zero separately. And this is equivalent to taking a constant lambda equal to zero. And when that happens, your x dependence is just uh, a linear function of x. If you you're left with this differential equation if you take lambda is equal to zero. If you integrate this twice, you, you're left with a, a linear relationship. Applying the boundary conditions to this expression. So on one end of the rod, you're left with just the constant d1 when you take the derivative which is equal to zero. And you don't get any extra information from the second boundary condition. So what you're left with then is when, it's, when n is equal to zero, x is just uh, a constant. And just like you would do for uh, for a series, we're going to call this constant C naught over two. And because superposition will still hold, uh, we can add this to our general solution. where uh, our coefficients cn including n is equal to zero is still given by this expression. Okay, so in particular, this means that our coefficient c of zero here is just equal to an integral of our initial condition uh, function f of x. Okay, so this shows you how we can uh, solve Neumann problems for partial differential equations. You have to be a bit more careful with this uh, extra term. Um, but again, all of this is built on the same premise as Fourier series. So if you're comfortable with that, uh, this kind of uh, hand waving should make some sense to you. Then again, this is uh, the third illustration of how to use separation of variables to uh, solve Laplace's equation and the heat equation um, under very general conditions by building up the solution by superposition. So using something that seems like a weakness and turning it into, into a strength.